all your ways, great all your works. Today is Palm Sunday on the calendar, the 24th of March this year, the day that the church world is looking as the triumphal entry of Jesus riding upon a coat into Jerusalem and uh, the week before uh, his ascension or his death uh, or actually maybe just a few days before his death and um, this is the day that the um, they're going through the town past the stones as they're uh, crying out or as the people are crying out Hosanna blessed be the name of the Lord they go to the temple hearing the people shouting out Hosanna blessed be the name of the Lord and uh this morning, uh, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 11, I'm going to read just a verse here, because I, I want to prepare our hearts today. Because so many times we use in our vocabulary and in our speaking worship and praise uh, interchangeably. Sometimes we use them even synonymously, and they aren't even synonymous. Uh, but we talk about bringing our worship, you praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and. Uh, and yes, uh, from the time period of nine, after 900 to today, it's kind of, that's where it's time to begin to get in our mix there. But this morning, true worship has to do with dying. In verse 11 of Genesis chapter 22, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. And so he said, here I am. Abraham, Abraham. And he responds, I am here. I am here. God Get a hold of our hearts. The next few moments today, I, I want to minister to you of true worship. Because true worship needs a response. I am here. Listening to the Lord speak or an angel of the Lord calling our name. Yes. And we're able to respond. I am available. I am here. Here I am. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Ever grateful. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Worship comes from two words that deals with worthy or worthness. Worthiness. And, and that's where we've come to the more modern term of worship. Because we worship the Lord 
or who he is. Uh, it is a term that was taken for royalty, that when they, you know, the king or the queen's present, they were worthy of honor to either stand when they enter into the room, or if you approach them, they were worthy of honor or their worthiness for you to bow or for a, uh, a woman or a young lady to curtsy uh, in the presence of royalty. But Abraham, and from Genesis through most of the Old Testament, and, and there is some of that that deal, does not deal with this, but most places where you see where there is worship, there's death. Something has to die. When we look at Abraham being called out of a land of the heathens and, and God saw Abraham and uh, before his name was Abraham, he was, known, he was known as Abram and Sarai. And Abram and Sarai, God just looked at them and, and God spoke to Abram and Abram responded to God then. And there were times that Abram walked with God that God spoke to him or an angel of the Lord came to him and he always responded to the call. And yes, they got out of God's plan, took a step ahead of God, and instead of walking beside God or let God leading them. And yes, we see in this particular passage here that God once again speaks to Abraham because this time he has a son. We're not sure how old his son Isaac is, but we know that he must be an upper teenage or maybe in early 20s. But see, God began to deal with his heart about worship. We don't look at it in that term as worship. But there's sometimes that God deals with us on our worship to say well, what is great, the greatest importance. Where do we put our importance? Because in worship there is choices that have to be made. Sometimes they're hard choices, not always easy. We human beings, we're always looking for the easy way out. What is the easiest for us? We like to go through our life with no pain, right. no suffering, no heartache. But God was testing Abraham's worship. Because God spoke to Abraham, said, I want you to take your son, and distinctly say, your only son, and I want you to offer him for a sacrifice. See, when it comes to worship, something must die. This is the first reference to true worship here in this 22nd chapter of Genesis. I wonder how long Abraham struggled with the idea that I I I'm going to Worship. Uh, God's called me to Moriah, Mount Moriah, to worship. But in going to Mount Moriah to worship, it's going to cost me something. He struggled with it. I know because I only have one boy. I've been blessed with two sons. But I have one son. And if God said, I want you to go worship me, but in doing so, you're taking your son 
you can lay him on the altar. You will sacrifice him for the love of me. Where is your love? What's the greatest pull on your heart today in your love? Because some things that we love and hold so dear are the, the things that the hardest to give up. That has the strongest pull on our heart. In all the preparation of Abraham getting ready to go, taking his servants and, and getting Isaac to get the wood loaded and, and they start off their journey. Nobody thought about it at the time. They, they left until they got at the base of the mountain and Abraham told his servants, you stay here and the son and I are going to go worship. Then Isaac, we see that we've got all the proper things for worship. We've got the wood, we have the fire, but we all have a sacrifice. The servants didn't even catch on to that because they didn't say, uh, along the journey or when they got ready to leave, say, Abraham, did you forget a sacrifice? You're going to go worship. You have wood and you have fire, but don't you need something else to go with your worship? But his son picked up the fact that, hey, Dad, you got wood, fire, but no sacrifice. And, and I, I can see Abraham come alongside his son and put his arm around him and said, son, when we get to the top of the place where we'll meet the altar, I'll explain it to you then. I, I, in his heart, in his mind, he was holding and lingering and cherishing every moment before he had to break down to tell his son, you're the sacrifice. Because we, we don't see it until they build the altar and have the wood placed upon it when Isaac said, Dad, where's the sacrifice? But Abraham, because he believed God, he had, his trust was in God and not the circumstances about him, that he told his son, Son, God spoke to me and you're the sacrifice. And we don't see an argument. We see the fact that, that, that there was no struggle. Isaac crawls upon the altar. He may have some help in his dad put him up there, laying him up there on the altar. But as he begins to pull back on the knife, See, there, there was a, a word in, in his heart that he spoke by faith before they left the base of the mountain. The Lord himself will provide. That's what he could still hung on to. Those are the words he could hear ringing in his ears. The Lord will provide. And he begins, as he takes that dagger and, and he begins to draw it back, the Lord will provide himself. A sacrifice. I don't think, I, I know I couldn't look into the eyes of my son who's laying there and with the dagger in hand and look down into his eyes. Abraham, tears flowing down as he raises that knife up and begins to plunge it toward his son. But knowing there's a promise laying there on the altar. Even if I kill this boy, God is able to raise him up. Because God will provide himself a sacrifice. That's right. About that time, an angel grabs his hand and says, Hey, what are you doing? Stop it. Look over there in the thicket. There's a, there's a ram. And I can imagine what tears really flowed then because all the adrenaline 
that was bottled up inside of both of those men as Abraham took the knife and began to cut the cords away from his son's hands and feet. And they probably embraced and they probably cried and went over there and got that lamb and put it on the altar. But see, when Moses was instructed to build a tabernacle unto the Lord, every time they were called to worship, something died. We don't see the change of worship where it becomes a, 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 a fact of a ceremony of uh, uh, exalting the Lord because he is worthy. Our great high priest is worthy of our worship, his worthiness. But we see that because of who he is and our worship, we bring something that it must die. Within us, the Apostle Paul, he says, you know, I die daily. We've got to crucify the old man. And when I begin to uh, ponder over this week of things that must die because of our worship, No wonder the, the, the Samaritan woman, when she was talking to Jesus, that our fathers worship in this mount. Do you know what she was referring to? All these years I thought she was thinking about all the times they got together and they clapped their hands and they uh, sang praises unto Jehovah. But see, she remembers a time when something had to die and that her family was part of. She had a connection to the Old Testament covenant. Whether it's on a new moon or if it's on the Day of Atonement, if they were to bring a sin offering, that sin offering had to die for their sin. We see that on, on just a few days before, prior to the, uh, the, uh, the, the trial because the trial ended at, at right after Passover. Passover started it was about midway through. But according to prophecy, the lamb had to die before Passover. We see that the worship ends on the last day of Passover. Because that's when the lamb dies. But we see that as he goes into Jerusalem, they're rejoicing. When you think about all the people that had to make an offering, they are going there because they're going to get their sins pushed ahead. They're, they're rejoicing because we have a sacrifice here that's going to die for my sin. When you combine worship with praise, something had to die that we can lift our hands to praise Him. We, we've got to die out daily. We must sacrifice ourselves in order to have true worship. Jesus said well, they're looking for true worshipers, but the true worshipers were going to come because of a death. How can you have true worshipers without something dying? The Samaritan woman, she, all she was prided herself in the fact that it was this mount our fathers worshipped. Now realizing there was a lamb standing in front of her that was going to die that for people like her couldn't know what true worship is truly about. This morning, saints, I will worship the lamb of glory. I will worship the king of kings because it was because my worship was possible because he died. 
Because he died, I can rejoice in the King of Kings. I can rejoice because there's a hope of a resurrection. I can rejoice because of a Messiah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise. No longer do we go through a, a, a sacrificial sacrament of, or rituals of bringing a, a lamb or a calf in and having its throat slit. Taking the blood and going behind a, a curtain uh, partition to sprinkle the blood upon a mercy seat. But every time that we do come into worship, we must die that our praise can make, be made alive for what he has done. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You talk about our worship. And I love to worship in this, the modern sense of worship when we rejoice in the Lord and, and we recognize the beauty of His holiness. And we recognize that He is who He is. And we lift our praises to Him. We magnify Him. For He is worthy. He is worthy. We bow down and worship Him. We lift our hands to honor Him. Hallelujah. We need to be like Abraham. When the Lord says, I need you to come and worship me. Be ready to let something die. Knowing that we have a promise that God himself did provide that sacrifice. Do you know that on the same mountain, thousands, hundreds of years prior, where Abraham was to offer up Isaac, is the same mountain or the mount that Jesus was crucified on. What a prophetic word when Abraham said, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. Who would ever have known 2000, over 2,000 years ago on a hill far away there will be a lamb slain on a spot where another son in worship was going to give his life. Oh God, upon this place, upon this heart, Lord, I build an altar for my worship. Hallelujah. Let's all stand this morning. Great is your power, great is your strength, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised.